Hey, man. Watch out! It's a woodpecker from space! Alright guys, here I am. I have, you know, this old sculpture that I worked on and I am ready to fire it. It's been drying for quite some time and hopefully we can fire it. So I'm going to take it to the kiln. This so here's the sculpture and, you know, the, the stick is still up here. It's actually moving a little bit. I could probably even pull it out, but I'm not going to. This is that skewer that I used in the beginning to kind of get things done. So as I'm looking around the sculpture, I can tell like little there's been little cracks that have been developing. There's this little crack here on the base and there's another crack here. And this is just from drying. So here's more cracks. I do have um I do find that these cracks cracks develop into larger uh, little things, but I'm not that concerned. Um, so, and then you have a hole here where one of the skewers was. You can still work on this. I mean, you can even get this to a workable, like malleable sort of clay, but I'm not going to do that. And you can even scrape. So let's say you wanted to get some real fine detail. You can do that. You could even sand it. You can use your finger to kind of burnish it if you wanted. So if there's anything that you want to to work on, you can take this time to do it. So as I'm like looking around, I'm just kind of paying attention. And this is really like a, a bunch of birds. Um, so this is kind of like just a little record of what the sculpture looks like. Because, you know, when you put it in a kiln, you just don't know what will happen. But... You know, this is the sculpture that I am going to be firing. And if you really want it to work 100%, you make a mold out of it. But it's a very difficult process for me. And I never really learned how to do um, molds very well, as you can watch from my previous videos. I'm not really trained for that. I've been kind of learning. But for this, because there's so many, like, negative shapes, like here under the legs, right over there, under the arm. You'd have to make like cuts and mold it individually. So it gets kind of complex. So we are going to put it in a kiln. So let's go over to the kiln. Here I am in my garage and this is the kiln. So let's uh, look around a little bit. So this kiln is not particularly great because it doesn't have a timer so I do find that the way to go around it is just to leave the lid open and let the air escape that way it's not as hot so I'm just gonna make the boots and I am gonna be pushing this off over here just so it is not near all of this so I have it usually tucked tucked into my uh, little area here and these are the controls this is a paragon high fire kiln I think I bought it for I don't know 25 or 50 dollars something like that and then you have these controls see if I turn it here turn it here turn it here that's the way it would go and it's got like just a low um, low and offsetting to high and unfortunately one of them doesn't work that's why i have to do weird stuff and this is the i guess you can say the timer but what you do is you push this down you push the button and then it starts so let's look inside this is fire bricks you can make your own by the way you can make your own kill for sure so this is heavy and this is just uh, an electric kiln. You can make it out of wood. You just need the fire brick, really. And, but it's easier to control an elect electric kiln. So at the base here, 
I'm gonna clean that up. So I'm gonna pull it out and just clean all the clay that it broke. So these are old sculptures that are broken. Cleaned it, see the base is kind of clean, not perfect. Now what I wanna show you is this, and it's hard to see in video, but this is a cone and it's melted on here. And I'll see if I can remove it. There we go. So that is a cone and it's actually almost glass-like. So a cone lets you fire something to a particular temperature. Previous years that I had cones before, I never had cones, but these are the cones that I have. So what cones really are is it lets you fire to a particular temperature of the clay. And what I use is uh, red low fire. So low fire is usually like what five or six and I believe it's this one What is this? It, these are by the way called pyrometric cones and this is a I think it's a six anyways But it's um, I managed fire before without Yeah, this is a three okay. and then you see they're like different different colors Usually like different um, material, like a different like, I think calcium or whatever it is they put in it. Go over to my kiln and the first step is putting the cone in. So this is the cone we're going to be using. And it's just like a little thing. It's made out of uh, ceramics that's already fired. And what happens is that when the kiln reaches this temperature, it bends this or breaks it and it stops the kiln. So I'm gonna lift this up, push this down, and I don't even need to push it down. When I push it down, it actually lifts up and I'll put the cone in. It fires that metal part down and it stops the kiln. That little bit, you see that? That's where the trigger is. So when the cone breaks, it lifts up this metal piece this comes off and shuts off the kiln. So what we are going to be doing is loading up the kiln with the sculpture. The sculpture is in. One thing I did that I didn't show you is I did this. So I have these little, little blocks and I put the sculpture on top of the blocks because I want air to kind of go underneath. And now to turn on the kiln, I push this in. And it should start. There we go. I pushed on the button. And now, I should be able... Now, here's the problem with this kiln. The bottom one doesn't work. And, um, I don't know if the guy sold it to me like that. So what I do is, I turn on the top one. And now I hear the electrics working. And what I'm going to do now, is let this run with the lid open. So, it is going to start heating up, but it's only heating up this part. I'm going to be closing it halfway like this, just so it um, it pushes in a little bit. So I'm just going to put a brick on there. So it's been about an hour, and I've been running it. So usually, like, I'm always, like, kind of poking my head. And when you kind of zoom in, and if you were to, like, look inside, I can actually put my hand, and I'm not going to get burned or anything but I can see it really um, getting hot. Uh, also turn the top one to low. Uh, normally you don't need to do that yet, but because the bottom one for me does not work, uh, I don't know exactly why. I am just going to leave that. I do like to kind of peek inside. This kind of lets a lot of gases and stuff escape. And it's a good idea. You know, kilns usually have they come in sections, I don't know if you can tell. This part is one, then this part is another. So you could actually remove this and close it for a little bit more um, temperature control and it uses like less, uh, it'll take less time to to heat up. Now, yep, sculpture is still there. It is nice and warm. One thing I'm gonna do now, I think I'm gonna Keep this one, I'm gonna remove this and I'm gonna close it up. So here we go. The kiln <clears throat> has been running for five, six hours. And now I'm just gonna let it run at this temperature for a while, maybe 
Uh, it's around like 5 p.m. So I'll come back at like around 8, 9, and I'll check it. What I usually do, I'll grab some gloves, lift it up, and see how the sculpture is doing. This is going to get red hot eventually. Not yet, because I still have it on low here. That's on high. <clears throat> and this one's on low, so all of this eventually is going to be cranking all on high. And that's what's going to um, fire it to its uh, final temperature. But that, when the kiln gets to a very high temperature, it kind of snaps this, the cone and it drops and shuts off the kiln. And this is a very good way of keeping warm in the winter. So I don't do it in the summer. Uh, this is the best time to do it. Alright guys, it is the morning and it's time to see if the sculpture fired. So the kiln is cold, I can put my hand, so I don't know if the sculpture was successful or not, but we're going to see. And sometimes when I open this box, uh, it's like little pieces, so let's go. Oh, the sculpture is in here. Look at that. Okay. It is in. It is still hot. And, you know, one of the risks now is that, you know, often it's, there's, um, it's cold outside, but on the inside is hot, so you could have a break if it's still hot, by the way. This thing. Look at that. Look at that. Yep. So we have a permanent sculpture. If you touch it, let's see. Yeah, it works pretty well. So, that is how you fire a sculpture and that is pretty neat so it didn't break anywhere we still have some visible cracks but eh, that's normal that's fine um, let's put this aside so let's see if anything broke it, you know this crack I don't know if it, you can get you guys can tell but there is a little bit of a crack but it's pretty successful it's a good fire doesn't seem to um, need much other than the stuff that we need to do right there there and where's that hole that uh, I don't even know where the hole oh yeah look at that see the um, the skewer that we had just burned off that's why like I just left it in there so all of that just kind of burned so that's perfect is how you fire a sculpture or at least that's how I fire it and this kiln really just cost me uh, $50 or so uh, it was pretty cheap but it does the job it's um, it's just not as fancy as the good one so next step really is just uh, I'll probably show it in, a in another video I'm not gonna do it on this one is covering that the top hole and the other one and then painting it giving it a nice um, nice look so it looks like a, a finished sculpture but I do like how the clay looks as well like this you could leave it like this if you wanted and just put like a, a little bit of a wax on top to make it a a, a nice uh, type of piece but that's how you fire a sculpture I appreciate you guys watching and I'll see you in the next video